Hello, this is Congressional Update with Michael Capuano. I'm Sarah Fishman. How are you, Mike? Wonderful, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. So Mike is wearing a green tie, but he tells me it has nothing to do with the halfway to St. Patrick's Day um, milestone that we passed over the weekend. Um, so this concludes the humorous part of the show because <laughs> I, am, I am actually quite overwhelmed, and maybe you can help sort this out for me. Um, ISIS, the Islamic State, it just seems like this whole thing is, is blowing up, so to speak, in, in the Middle East. Um, first of all, can we define, can you explain what the Islamic State is exactly? <laughs> I could do my best. Yes, I mean, do your part best, Part of the problem please. is definitional. Um, it, is, it started out as al-Qaeda in Iraq, and it, has, it was pretty much wiped out there. And uh, when the Syrian uh, revolution, for lack of a better word, broke out. Uh, they pretty much moved over there as a so small... So what was that, like 2011 or...? Yeah, give or take, two, yeah. two or three years ago. You know, they they, they kind of moved their emphasis to there. Um, joined up with other rebel forces and slowly but surely grew uh, and has morphed into this new group. Which has territory both in Iraq and well, in Well, it seems Syria, to be more than a revolutionary. across the border? Yeah, or? it seems to be more of a revolution. has morphed out of a simply we're against Assad in Syria group into a group that now wants to build its own uh, country, for the lack of a better word. So a few months ago, I think, we had discussed this, and you said that there was really no role for the U.S. because it seemed to you a civil War. In Syria. Yes, in Syria, sorry. And now you're of a slightly different opinion. Mm. So can you summarize what you put in your e-newsletter? You well, said I'm not of a slightly different opinion okay. on Syria. Okay. I, I mean, what has happened then is Then correct that, me, please. Well, what's happened is now that ISIS has moved into Iraq and has made public designs on um, other areas, um, they have become a regional threat. Okay. And so, therefore, our interest is in securing Iraq to some degree uh, and to defending our allies to some degree. Uh, you can't do it without the, your allies stepping up as well, and that's the big question. So, for me, um, since things have changed, uh, my opinion has changed. I do think that what we have done thus far, uh, namely aerial assaults in defense of the Kurds, aerial assaults in defense of Christians trapped. Uh, 150 airstrikes so far, I yep, believe. Uh, from what I, from, again, I don't know all the details, but of, of what I know, um, what we have done thus far, I think, is appropriate and is authorized under both the Constitution and the law at the moment. Without um, the president without seeking con prior to, congressional. Prior to congressional approval. Right. If this continues uh, over a long period of time and becomes part of a planned strategy as opposed to a reaction, which is what it has been, hmm. um, then I think congressional approval is needed, and I think that would be appropriate and necessary. Okay, so you had said, I believe in your electronic newsletter, that you didn't support, there was something you didn't support right I, now without... I don't support without the president's proposal, as I understand it, we have yes. not seen it in documentation yet, but as it was presented in his speech and what has been presented since Last then, week, yes. is that he wants one of the one of the steps he wants to do is to designate um, certain Syrian opposition forces as uh, I don't know as some good opposition forces and bring them out of Syria to train them probably in somewhere else in Saudi the Middle East. Arabia maybe I think Saudi Arabia but it could be anywhere right. anywhere in the region they have offered that's right and I do not support that at this time. And I don't support it at this time because, first of all, I'm not sure what the long-term policy is. Second of all, it, we have had a very bad track record in identifying friends uh, and then training them to, to fight. We spent 25 billion plus in Iraq doing just that. Um, they turned out not to be our friends, number one. Number two is they ran under the first assault. Uh, and, and number three, this is not a new proposal. We had people making this proposal a year ago. It wasn't the president, it was some of the loudest voices now beating those war drums. And they wanted us to arm the rebels and train the rebels and do all this. Well, that is such a, a narrow view of the world. That presumes that the Syrian opposition is like the, is like the American Civil War, where there was the, red, uh, the, the blue army and the gray army. That's not what this is. It's there not are, a, a, a clearly delineated, Absolutely not. It's a hundred groups, all of whom don't like Assad or whatever, not a hundred, but whatever, some large number I, of groups. I think it's larger than that. And, yeah. and, but that doesn't mean they like each other. That doesn't mean they like us. Right. They just have a unified force against Assad. 
And, and that's all well and good, but that's a civil war. That's nothing more than that. Um, Anyway, all that being said, had we listened to these very same voices a year ago, we would have been arming and training ISIS, people who are now fighting for because ISIS. Because they were and a Syrian rebel Because group. they were part of the Syrian rebel group, and who right. knows who would have been chosen. And on top of that, of the ten to 30,000, depending on which estimate you use, uh, of the ISIS uh, fighters, no one has yet said how many of them we actually did train in Iraq. I am willing to bet that a 1,000 or more who know, I have no idea what the number is, but some significant portion of that force probably was trained by the U.S. military in Iraq within the last 10 years, and yet they have morphed into this. We need to ask those questions before we start arming and training people we More barely people. know. Yeah. And, and I'm not, again, so therefore I, was, I would not say never. I would just say not yet. And especially since over the weekend I read one report, and I have not confirmed it, I'm trying to get it confirmed now, see if it's, but the report was written in a respected news outlet, um, but the, I, I read one report where ISIS and the rest of the Syrian rebels have now come to an agreement themselves, between themselves, about Assad. If they can come to an agreement about anything with ISIS, how do then we say, well, you're our friend even though you've got to deal with our enemy? Right, so this the the enemy of my enemy yeah, is my, my friend, friend thing. It, so is that it's, it's, it's part all, of it? It's all mixed up though, because some yes. people say that if you try to diminish ISIS, then that helps Assad. It or, does. Yeah. So I mean, if, why do you think that Assad's government came out and supported the U.S. bombing inside of Syria? Syria. No yeah. country ever does that, especially his when uh, Assad's government knows that our government doesn't like him and has called for his ouster. Yet they have said it's perfectly fine with us if the U.S. government bombs ISIS within the Syrian borders. This is just so confusing. Plus, has the president or who, whoever been inconsistent or because? Two, three weeks ago when he was on vacation, he said he had no strategy. Then yeah, but I, I thought that that was a, that was a poorly, a poor choice of words. Okay, but the, then he, last week, had this, we will degrade ISIS right. and eventually destroy it. And then over the weekend, it seemed like on all the news talk shows, they were saying, well, we have to get a coalition. And, and in fact, this is something you've said, that yep. there needs to be a credible international coalition right. for this effort to work. And, a, and I don't mean a coalition saying, we love you, we'll send a check. No, no, no. But a coalition to me means we will actually send people to have boots on the ground. We will send planes to help you yes, make these Yes, and I attacks. think that this is, this is the sticking point because there are all these countries that say they will help. But, but then really. if you read the list of what they're willing to do, Jordan will pull provide intelligence and so-and-so yeah. -and -so will provide this. Now Australia has now said it will actually provide ground troops. Yeah, and that's you know good. That? That's one. And, Australia, yeah. and how many? And I, I don't know. And they're all meeting in, in Paris now, aren't they? Right. Isn't there I some big... I believe that's correct. Right. So... And, oh, what a, and that's why I'm saying I think it's a mistake for us to be required to vote this week. This is still an ongoing situation. I am open. I want to be supportive of the president's position. I am open to listening. I have not said no, never on any of this. But I, if I'm forced to vote this week on the basis of the information I have at the moment, I would vote no. So is there going to be a vote this week, I you don't think? know. I think the answer is there might be. I think there, there might, might be. be. That, that's not very definitive. Well, it's I'm because, I'm not, because you have to ask the speaker that one. He's the one who determines the, the floor schedule. So this, uh, maybe I'll digress a little bit. So is Congress going to do anything other than pass a continuing resolution between they now and the November? On this. Pardon? They might vote on this, and there might be a couple of other small things. You got a percentage, more than 50%? Oh, I have no idea. No, I have think no I, idea. It, it, if they come up with a proposal, which they probably are doing now, mm -hmm. it'll th th likely to be just for training these opposition forces. Then they're going to vet it. I mean, they will then do a whip count, and they will determine whether they have the votes. If they have the votes, it'll come up this week. Do you think week. they have the votes? I don't know. I mean, I think people, and I'm one of them, in a vacuum, I would tend to want to support my president. Um, this is not a vacuum, and in this case, as I've said, I'm open for more information. If they have more information for me, I'm happy to listen to it. Um, but based on what I know today, if I had to vote today, it would be no. Um, but that could easily change tomorrow, next week, next month, and I personally think the president should take time to allow the situation to grow so that we know who's in the coalition, so we know what they're willing to do, so that we, uh, what, are we actually going to send U.S. troops in? I think that, you know, we have... Don't we already have, what we do we have? We have 1,500 advisors in, in, in Iraq, but we all know that an advisor is a military man with a gun and good training and is helping do things. Now, theoretically, not supposed to, to engage. In theory, if it's non-combat. You know, if someone attacks them, I want them to 
engage. I want yeah. them to defend themselves. And you know, like anything, that I am not. I am not saying I would never send additional troops back in. I've never said that, even when I voted against the Iraq War. Um, uh, At even the very when I've beginning, called, uh, 2003? Uh, two or three, yeah. yeah. And I've never said that I wouldn't say, even when I've called for troops to leave Afghanistan, and leave Iraq, I have never said I'll never, ever, ever send them back in. Unfortunately, I don't know why politicians say never. Well, it, unfortunately, in the real world, you, you deal with the situation you have at the day, and you try to figure out what's going to go, but things change. And, and, and for me, in this situation, it is just, I won't say it's just beginning, but it's just becoming public. It's is just it going becoming, to become worse before it becomes I better? I think so, yeah. It's really scary. It, it, it's very destabilizing. I, I, I'm actually, I think place. both those words are accurate, and I'm glad you used them, because it should be. Yeah. All right, so. But it's also the one thing people need to see is all completely intertwined with other issues going on in the Middle East today. It's intertwined with the with That's the, kind of been the, the nature so-called of the Arab Middle Spring. East it's intertwined with the Israeli-Palestinian problem. It's yeah. intertwined with the Ukrainian situation um, because Russia is involved. And it's intertwined with the Iranian situation, both directly because we we don't get along, and also because Iran is trying to get a nuclear weapon. Right. So all if, of do these we have are, them in the coalition or not? Some people have said. And what are they? doing in reason. the coalition does right. that mean have they is part of their deal to be in the coalition that we let them have a nuclear weapon which i think is 10 times more That'd dangerous yeah. i think so too uh, but at the same time even if they go after a nuclear weapon do we are we really going to send us troops in are we really going to bomb them and if we bomb them does it stop them from getting a nuclear weapon is it just encourage them to do it these questions are very this serious very difficult and and uh, i think that we need to Understand so, that all these things are interrelated, and we not, we we need to be careful. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, Republican, has said that this is an army of a terrorist group, not the army of an organization, and it will take an army to, you know, deal with that's, an army that's, kind that's of thing. That's not so, a brilliant commentary. That is, that is sophomoric commentary. Of course, that's true. Okay, so. Do you but think if, he's we'll end up with if he's suggesting the U.S. troops should go in, he couldn't be more wrong if his life depended Sounds on it. Sounds like and, that's and, what he suggests. And Senator Graham, though I like him on a personal basis, has never seen a conflict he did not want to resolve with the U.S. military on the ground. He's one of the drum beaters. He is absolutely one of the lead drum beaters. He and, and Senator McCain are out there all the time. Yeah. Every time there's a hiccup in the world, they want the U.S. military yeah. involved. And I find that to be short-sighted, ridiculous, and wrong most of the time. Okay, let's take another sort of angle of this whole thing. Um, the individuals who have been beheaded and videos of them having been beheaded. By the way, did you see any of that? I, I, I've seen what I needed to see. Um, my understanding was that, the, that when this happened with James Foley, that there was, people were taken by surprise so that the video was up there for a while. I didn't want to watch I it. Do, I don't know. But then subsequently they've. I don't know. YouTube has a policy, you know, you don't keep Good. it up there. Okay, so um, negotiating for release of hostages is um, not something the U.S. does. Um, doesn't negotiate with terrorists. Not only that, but it's illegal I think for a private individual to pay ransom and apparently James Foley's family was told that if they paid a hundred and thirty two million dollars that he would be released which of course there was no guarantee of um, and if they had if the family had had done that somehow right. that would have been illegal and they could have been prosecuted by the Department of Justice right. so in as opposed to in the UK where they don't negotiate, they don't pay, but it isn't a prosecutable action. So I guess my, my, my general question is, is the policy we have, does it make sense to you? Yes, it makes perfect sense because to me. Because why? Because it, it, if you negotiate with these people on the first one, you may save one person. It encourages them to then take 10 right. more. And, and Do you think they would have released well, that's a different question. I, no, I'm I, asking you. What do you think? Though? No, I, I don't think so. But that's beside the point. I mean, let's assume they would have. How do you stop the situation? And, and to negotiate with them, if they got a hundred, if they got a million dollars, they got ten cents. It encourages them to take ten more. The children of ten it's, other it's people. It's a bullying. A bullying. They can't, I mean, it's tactic. a terrible situation. Yeah. It is a difficult situation. There is no good outcome. 
but I also understand fully well why the policy is in place and I support it. Apparently, Al-Qaeda has received, I think it's over $120 million in ransom money since 2008 and $66 million, like just in the last year or so, from ransom paid, ransom paid. So that's a lot of money. Well, and what do they do with it? Weapons. Exactly. Yeah. Go out and create chaos yeah. and kidnap another people, you know, yeah. another person, 10 other people. Why shouldn't they when they're getting paid that kind of money? And of they're, course, so it's they're, a successful, unfortunately, it's a successful approach towards doing business from the way they see it. And there are two other Americans that are still being held. That's my understanding. Do you have, a, a, do you have an understanding of what might be done now with one of these people? Was it Foley? They tried to rescue yeah. him and they... It didn't work. It was a failed operation That's because right. the hostages had been moved Still a multiple worthwhile times. thing to try. Yeah. So do you think that's something the government should try or not? Absolutely. If they have credible evidence to believe it's true, yes, absolutely. Where, where someone is located. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know all the details of the information they had. I presume they wouldn't have put American military in harm's um, way had they not had information they, had, they thought was reliable. Okay. So how does this compare with the exchange of five al-Qaeda terrorists for it, the release of... It's a fair question. That's why Army I, Sergeant I, I, I don't think... I mean, what I said is I support the policy. Policies have exceptions to every rule. I don't know whether that was a fair exchange. I really don't. Is a military person, person worth more? more than a non-military? That's a fair question. Uh, I don't think the answer is yes, but I think it's a fair question to ask. And exchange of pr prisoners in a, in a military action is not a new concept. It's right. been done from time in memoriam. Um, it is a different, now again, I don't know what else was involved. My presumption is it was merely an exchange of prisoners. It's a fair question to ask. Those guys had been in Guantanamo yeah, and, and Bay for know, and, over a decade. Exactly. So and, somebody and, thought they weren't, you know, shouldn't be well, released. Um, well, they wouldn't be negotiating for people that were going to yeah. get released. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the, but then again, Mr. Bergendahl wouldn't have been released either. And I know that there have been questions about whether he had deserted or not. All fair questions, all of which should be adjudicated in an American judicial system. Uh, not simply because someone said this about him and therefore so we're not going to go get do, him. Do you support that exchange? Conceptually, or? the answer is yes. But I mean, in this case, did from you? From what I know. I don't know all the details. I mean, from what I know, the answer is yes, I do. Okay, but there from was what no I saw from a distance, it was an exchange of prisoners in, a, in an act of war. Again, a normal circumstance. Now, if there was money involved or something else involved, that's a different story. So does there have to be any congressional approval, or is this also some My understanding is there's supposed to be some congressional notice, and there might like not have happened in this case. Yeah. 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 And not approval, but notice. And I, and I don't, again, that notice wouldn't go to me. It would only it would go, go to, to intelligence committees. That's right, and I'm, I'm under the, there have been allegations that it did not happen. And if that's, that's the case, that's read. a problem. Yeah, so now there was this vote fairly recently. This, this happened end of May, beginning of June, but the vote was just like last week. Right. And the vote was 249-163 in favor of condemning the president for having done this. Now, some people said this is just a sal vote, too little, too late to discredit the president. Well, it is. Now, you voted against this. That's right. Okay, so you're, I'm just trying to resolve whether... So you think it was the right thing to do? So Based on my information, yeah, the answer okay. is yes. But right, again, so I, I, I don't have access to all the information at the moment. It'll come out. Congress is going to do a whole bunch of hearings on this, spend a whole lot of money. If new information comes out that I don't have, I could easily change my mind. So is that but, okay to do that? What? To spend all that effort? Um, is it warranted in this situation? I, if there's enough members of Congress who think so, I have no problem with it. Yeah. Uh, do I think it is? Not from what I know at the moment, but obviously I'm the minority view. That alone is not my biggest concern. My biggest it, concern is using difficult and impossible military situations for political benefit only. My hope is that's not what they're doing. Um, I will find out when the, when the uh, review is concluded. Yeah. It's, it's, it's complicated. Well, <laughs> it's to complicated. say the least. Yeah. Um, well, it just, it seems like it's a departure from what's happened in the past. I mean, I can't recall something like this. It, we've we have it, exchanged spies for... Right, know, but this seems somehow different. Why? I, I don't know, because these people were perceived... We don't have very military people that get, you know, caught up. Well, it was, first of all, it was often. five people. It wasn't like it was... 
went for one or something. I but, don't know. It but just as you just said, those five be. people have been in jail for 10 years. Yeah. How militarily significant could they be 10 years later? And the answer is, who knows? Yeah, now, I that, don't know. That's a, that's a judgment question as yeah. to whether it should be five for one if those five, that's a different question. You know, the question is, should we be exchanging prisoners in a military action? We've always done it, and yeah. every country does it. So therefore, to me, it makes it the normal course of business. Yeah. And Israel is it's Israel extreme. does it all the time. Well, they also do. Uh, was there one case, I think, where there was someone who was released for like a 1,000? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the, that was know, an ex that's a and, extreme. And, you know, do I think it should be second-guessed? Sure I do. I yeah. have no problem with questioning those things. Yeah. Uh, I have a problem with a knee-jerk reaction and a, and a conclusion before the review has been completed. Okay. All right, so let's see. What else should we do? Do you want to tackle another difficult issue. Why don't we ask you about <laughs> Ebola? Do I have a choice? Uh, yes, you do, but um, I'm not going to tell you what your other options are, so I guess no. Um, Ebola. Uh, some people have said that the U.S. should send military into Western Africa to help set up hospitals and that kind of thing. Is that, and that the reason that should happen is that the U.S. military has some logistical capacity that no other... They do organization in the world that has true. so what would they be doing like setting up mash well, we sent the military units? we sent the military in when haiti had their earthquake again for the very same reasons they have the ability to set things up quickly yeah. uh, and to you know manage a situation with a lot of aid going in at one time um i have I, I don't know enough about the details of the ebola outbreak if it is manageable or not it sounds um, like it's just about to become not manageable. Yeah, and I, I, so therefore, honestly, on this one, I don't have enough information to have a, an answer to this question. I do agree that if we send aid in, if, if, if it is decided to use the military, I understand why. Again, I support it. Not only so support what the, what it, I actually be... went on record asking the military mission be extended in Haiti for a while because they were the only ones who could rebuild the port, the only ones who yeah. could rebuild the airport. Um, and in this case, I would understand why it makes some sense. Um, whether we should do it or not is a fair question, and whether and I would only want to do it if it was capable of some degree of success. So it's going to help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not That's doing. Hard. I wouldn't want to do it just to look good. And right, feel right, good. right. So Cuba is sending 165 doctors. Is that uh, which which people are grateful for? Good. So is that something we should? I mean, we have well, people my, there my already. My question is, how many do we have there now? I don't know the answer to and that. And we have several who I mean, have gotten sick. As a matter of fact, of the three, I think it is Americans. Two of them are medical workers. Yeah. I mean, one of them was a, was a relief worker. Yeah. So we have plenty of people on the ground now. Could we use more? Yeah, probably. Um, but Do you have any constituents who are in West Africa? Not that any? I know of, but I would doubt, I would be surprised if there aren't any. Because But of, I'm not aware of any. Yeah. You know, this okay. is, Greater Boston is a very international city, so I would be surprised if we don't. Okay. All right, now this is an odd segue. There is none. Um, Scotland. Uh, is going to vote on whether or not to become independent from the rest of Great Britain. Right. They're going to vote on Thursday. Do you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> is it destabilizing the way ISIS is? No, no. I mean, for I, Scotland I, I, to remain or not remain I, look, in the UK? I mean, yeah, Scotland is a self-identified region of the world, has been, even though the British have ruled it for, I don't know, five Over 300 years. 300 years, years yeah. uh, some long period of time. Um, if they want their independence, so be it. I, I'm sure they can work out their differences. I mean, Scotland is not a bunch of rabble. It is an educated, thoughtful, progressive society, and um, I'm sure that maybe more so than other parts. Yeah, of and the I'm UK. sure that their differences with England, Ireland did it. I mean, why well, if Scotland chooses to do it? Well, they, they, I'm sure it won't be a break. They're not going to build a you know a new well, wall. But some people have said, and I'm, I'm not going to get the details of this right, but if you're independent, but you don't have control of an independent bank, yeah, that then you have yeah, problems like some countries in the will EU be, have well, had. Th th those are all detail questions, all of which are very important. You don't think it's important. a big deal because it's oh, a no, smaller it's important. economy? But that's for the Scottish to decide, not, not for me. Okay. I mean, so whatever the Scots decide is fine by me. Okay. Well, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to ask you to make political predictions, which I know you hate making, so I would like it noted that we're only spending a few minutes on this. <laughs> so we now have Martha Coakley as the Democratic gubernatorial candidate. There was talk that you had hugged her in a diner. Well, we didn't hug. That you I, didn't I, I hug. might have hugged. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Um, so are you now going to go out and stump for her? I'm going to do whatever she asked me to do within because reason. Because you, you said you had known Charlie Baker for a long time, and there was I this have. little kerfluffle that you had said something that wasn't negative about him. Therefore, that <laughs> meant that you didn't like her or 
I like something. Charlie Baker. He is a longtime friend of mine. Um, but we have significant philosoph philosophical and policy differences. Uh, I don't have to hate someone that I don't support. And if people need that, well, good for them. I, I actually think that's unfortunate. You had such a mic quote. I forget what it was, but it was something like, if you're expecting me to say something nasty about the other guy, I'm not going to do, do it. I mean, there are it people I don't like. like Charlie is not, I like Charlie. I like Martha Coakley. I'm yeah. supporting Martha Coakley. Okay. Um, so are you going to go out and stump for her? I'm going to do, do whatever she asked me to do. Okay. She asked me to do something the other day. I did it. Okay. Um, how do you think that's going to go? Is I, that going to be a close race? Yes, I think it'll be a close race. Yeah. Because Berwick sort of, I don't know. Now, there are so many independents. And maybe some things got, I don't know. I don't get You don't know exactly what's going to happen. I have no, no idea what's going to happen. you can't know exactly what's going to happen. I'd be shocked if any Berwick supporters do anything other than vote for Martha Coakley. OK. Um, <clears throat> so the Senate, now we've talked about this before. Will the Senate? Um, shift to having Republican control. I don't know. I think that's going to be very close as well. Whoever, whoever you runs the Senate. You said in the, the recent Senate. past that you thought it would. Yeah. Now, actually, in my so opinion, you think my it's opinion closer? shifts on this. It does shift. So and, what do you I, think now? It's hard. I mean, again, it's not in Massachusetts that's in play. I'm trying to read what's going to happen. The closest one we have is New Hampshire. Is right. Shaheen or uh, Scott Brown going to win? I think Shaheen's going to win that one. But I have She's no idea. She's slightly favored according to Nate Silver. I think she'll win it by more than that. The but that's stat. me. Statistics uh, but that, yeah, that's New Hampshire. It's right next right. door. Uh, how do I know what's going to happen? In do you know the only other state that's predicted to go Democratic? To go Democratic? To well, it is Democratic. She's an incumbent. There's, there's that will switch. It's Michigan. Yeah, that's possible. Gary yeah. Peters possible. That's going to yeah. be a tight race too. Yeah. So those are the the two. Um, so there are about nine different races that Nate that's Silver right. says are not in play. Yeah, in play. Okay, so, and now, um, all right, so Scott Moulton, who ran, Seth. what did I say? Seth, you said Seth, Scott. Seth, sorry. Got Scott Brown who, in mind. Yeah, who ran against Turney, who had been in office for 18 years, North Shore U.S. Congressman. Now, you supported Turney, right? Yep. I think all the, the delegation did, I right? I don't know, I assume so, I don't know that. Um, so he lost. So did that surprise you? Um, we all knew it was a tough race. I, I, I thought John would survive the primary. Um, my bigger concern was the final because if you have to spend all your time and money on the primary, you haven't got much left for a very did short he, run. Wasn't there this thing with his family? Yeah, and that's there was, four there was, years ago now. Yeah. I mean, it was vetted you don't think that was before. the issue? I don't know what the issues were. I mean, I don't live there, so I, I will leave the voters of that district to vote for themselves, um, to speak for themselves. Have you met Moulton? Have you talked with I him? I have not met him. Okay. All right. We have only one minute left. Um, do you have any predictions as to what will happen politically, either here or elsewhere? Democrats will win every seat in America. I mean, I, I don't know. Wow. No, I have no wow. idea. Wow. Any plausible predictions? No. Okay. <laughs> None All whatsoever. Right. This yeah, is the Red Sox will not win the pennant this year. Oh, really? You think that's you, a plausible? You're sure, you're sure about I'm that one? I'm pretty sure about okay. that one. All right, the congressman is sure about something. This has been Congressional <laughs> Update with Michael Capuano. I'm Sarah Fishman. Have a good day.